Good morning, Steve. How are you? Good morning, Dan. How are you? Good. Welcome to our Super Bowl 57 pre-show, where we're going to analyze the offense and defense of both teams, both the sure. uh, Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs, and we're going to make our prediction at the end of this podcast on who's going to win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But let's begin. No, no, we'll wait half on football. This is pretty much my football for tonight. Other uh, today, still got to represent my Titans, even though we fell apart and lost seven in a row at the end of the season and <laughs> until you said the names of the teams now i wasn't entirely sure who was playing i knew the eagles were <laughs> because of the always sunny guys are very excited about the philadelphia uh team but it's, <laughs> i don't pay any attention i i, I my man what, card was revoked a long time ago that's that that's fine that is fine um no but uh Let's, we'll, we'll try to remember. We'll, we'll each. I guess. I guess. Okay. Let's, Steve. I guess you're going with Philadelphia then to win. Yeah, absolutely. Over the Kansas, Kansas City. City Chiefs. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a Kansas City Chiefs fan, but I'm going to predict Kansas City Chiefs are going to take it. So there you go. Tune in. Tune in next Sunday and uh, find Please out. Please no how wagering. We... Please. <laughs> unless your state provide, unless your state allows it, and then um, and if there is a if you do have a gambling problem, please call a hotline. <laughs> Um. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I still got 150 bucks sitting in my gambling bank. I wonder if I should <laughs> wager today. No, I did buy a couple squares in the football pool, but that's about the extent of it. I'm really not into this today's game. Um, right. other than the dungeon, new hopefully Dungeons and Dragons trailer that they're showing. Oh, okay. Sometime during the game. Um, we're, now we're talking. Yeah, there you go. So, Steve, let's get to our uh, regular nerdy talk here. Um, creativity and and all and all its nerdum and role playing and geekery and comic books and other such uh, stuff that we do. Um, now, are you launching this Tuesday? Wednesday. 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 I did. I I couldn't do it. I didn't want to do it on Valentine's oh, Day. Just part of my head was just like I know people are. Um. They're spending all their money on chocolate hearts, things like that. Okay. <laughs> so they'll still have money left over. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping they'll be like a little nauseous <laughs> from all the chocolate and the, the romancing and they'll, <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, they'll stumble on their way to a Kickstarter and support that when it launches 11 a.m. East coast time, death dealing. <clears throat> Last I checked the 175 people are watching the campaign, which is never, I never, Never had that before. Never had 100, 175 people queuing up to at least kick the tires when it launches. So are you comfortable revealing what your goal is? 2,000. Oh, so with 175 and your basic physical copy? I, know, I don't I don't presume with a number that high, I don't presume all of them were going to back it. I mean, well, I but figure, let's say 100 of them do. Yeah, and if they go for the $25 tier, Boom. you know. We'll, we'll, we'll hit the goal. Yeah, I'm um, sure you'll hit it within two days. I'm trying to be very, I'm trying to be very optimistic about it. I'm also very simple. I'm trying to simplify it. I really wanted it to be, because it's my second zine. And part of me is like, oh, well then I'll just, all the people who missed the first zine quest back in August will be exposed to intoximancy for the first time. So I'm thinking this could still, I'm still such a new uh, uh, entrant into this space that um, having intoximancy in there is going to be a big deal. Like I've got, I've got the reviews, the quotes from uh, people who received intoximancy. I'm including that on the page. So kind of a little bit of social proof. Um, but uh, I was thinking about like packages, like, okay, so for $5, you get the death dealing PDF for $10, you get both PDFs and stacking it like that. But the list gets so long. I feel like at some point there's that analysis paralysis of like, what, what tier do I want? I, there's going to be a deck of cards. There's going to be two minis. Uh, so I've got a ton of stuff <clears throat> that it's going to be complicated. So I, I, I think it's going to be a lot of a la carte, like simple tiers. And then after you pledge, then you get to the add-on screen. And hopefully at that point, their add-on screen is ugly. It doesn't have any, you can't, you can't put graphics there. You'd think in the, yeah. <laughs> the 21st century. Um <laughs> Not even, not even saying 2023, just the 21st century. I could add a shot. The shopping cart would have a couple of graphics associated with each item, but not yet. Um, hey, Freely, nice to see you. Um, 
uh, yeah, so uh, it'll launch on Wednesday, 11 a.m. I'm excited, uh, but I still have a ton of stuff to do. I just finished, I've got six uh, card illustrations mostly done. I'd say five of them are really done, and the other one I'm kind of like, I think it'll look fine on the screen, but I have to tweak it some more. So the idea is, uh, I don't know if I want to dig into it just yet. Or... Yeah, go for it, yeah. So the idea is that you're, it's a, it's a just like with Intoximancy was the subclass I would want to play if I were a wizard. This is the subclass I'd want to play if I were a rogue. And the idea is you are, you have a magical deck of cards that you throw. And when you crit, they have a bonus ability, a little bonus damage, or if it's a face card, it has a little extra perk, usually something debilitating to the opponent in some fashion. Kings, it, it escalates, you know, jacks, queens, kings, it gets a little heavier. Aces are beneficial to you. And the joker and the fool are detrimental to you. Okay. So there's a, it's a, it's a fun little mix of extra things. It only happens when you crit. I don't want the slowed games down by saying every time the rogue attacks, they have to go to the chart and do the blah, 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 blah. I don't want that. That's, I don't want to slow games down. But if you do crit, it should be something fun and special and a little bit like wild magic is for sorcerers. Mm -hmm. Um uh, so for each one of the cards, uh, the face cards, I'm creating new artwork for it. And you know, I want each, so the idea is this is a deck of cards that you can use to play poker or blackjack with. It'll have all the standard faces on it. I didn't want to do tarot. Um, all the standard faces, but um, they also have the rules for each effect. So if you pull that card. So you can use a standard deck of cards if you want and just reference the chart in the zine. Right. Or I'll have a website as well. Um, it's going to be one of the early unlockable stretch goals. I want to build this thing. Um, which would be you click a button and it presents one of 54 cards with the rules. So you don't have to have the deck of cards. You don't have to, you know, as long as look you have at, a web connection. You're already getting in, in the app and stuff. No, 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 not an app, not an app. I'm not a software <laughs> developer. It's a website. I, apps are, apps are, a, apps are a, a lifelong commitment. And, you know, then you, you know, Apple releases a new iOS or Android comes out with a new system and you have to adapt and fair, infinite screen sizes. No, screw all that. Just a web browser <laughs> with a big fat button. Show me a card. Okay, that works. Um, no, I'm excited about it because um, and you're saying, you know, it's your second scene and it's getting all bigger. I mean, yeah, seriously, dude. I mean, look at the quality so far. I'm so glad done. you got him. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at this. This is the get these books, people. Seriously, this is amazing stuff. Thanks, Dan. This is a little Z. This. This, I mean, everybody else is doing, you know, black and white, scotch tape, you know, <laughs> type stuff. And then he's got full on, Steve's putting you all to shame with this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's, it's spot 20, varnishes. It's 21st century. You got print on demand. There's no reason things should be. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like the DIY. I like, no, it's okay. So to me, a zine is one person or a very small group of people, a handful of people creating something. Like as a, it's a, it's a super boutique thing. And this is super boutique, <laughs> but it's all, all one person, you know, as long as it's, I think it's, to me, that's the spirit of the thing. DIY. Yeah. <laughs> it's a book. It's, they a, came out it's, great. A, it's almost a tome. The, the printer did a lovely job. Yes, they did an amazing job. It made me job. look much better than... And you pretty much solidified that I'm never going to bother doing it now because I can't reach this quality. Of course you can. It's Mixum. The printer I use is Mixum. They're fantastic. You got, you, How dare you? How dare you? You got the design in the, you know... We each, we each do our own thing. I love I love <laughs> Oddity Off Print. I love it. I think it's. I think it is. it is what... That's that's the idea with uh, like Alan Moore and his comics. It's like you got it. Dave Gibbons is right for Watchmen, and um, why am I drawing a blank for From Hell? Eddie Campbell is perfect from uh, From Hell. I think if Eddie Campbell looks it over the pages at at um, at Watchmen and goes, "Why do I even own pens?" Right? Because Gibbons is perfect, but it's got it's not it. Each thing has to be right for itself, and I felt like Catacombs and Comedian, the uh, the Oddity no, yeah. off print in particular, that's your voice, and that that was it would it would be wrong if it, oh if, yeah totally totally like that yeah uh, Fraley I don't have my printer running yet but but you know when I do a Kickstarter I'm gonna have to have all sorts of 3D stuff available and things um, <laughs> but uh, yeah actually you know now that you know we were discussing it last week I think we were talking about Kablam and their printing. 
I checked it out, and I think that's going to be the way to go. The way I'm going to go with Star Marshals as a comic book. I'll just go ahead and kickstart it and just use them to, you know, get it out there. That's great. They do, do the great. And they sh- when they ship stuff, it is well, it is well packaged. Again, the uh, the owners of Kablam are comic book people, and so they know what a comic book's supposed to feel like. They know how to, and they know how important it is to get one in good shape. Right. You know? Yeah, they, um, oh, Fraley, I think I will definitely hit you up. It's just been too, it's set out in my garage. It's too cold and to, to do my 3D printing right now, but it's all, it's the station set up and I'm almost ready to go. And I can't wait to print, um, Steve's or Steve's miniatures. So, um, I no, saw, so I saw a print, someone, uh, I've seen a couple of prints so far of the kegger, which is something I released only as an STL on my website and to Patreon. And so uh, I've seen one printed and I also seen one painted. It's not even painted and it looks great. It is yeah. so much easier to have a character that's all basically wood. I think it's a lot easier for people just to, oh, it's all brown, and let the let the let the modeling do all the the work. And they they did a great job. I, I'll share them on dis on my Discord. No, I'm thinking about incorporating the kegger into uh, Catacombs of Comedians <laughs> game. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So that, that's right up its alley. So I mean, a lot of the stuff that's in here. Oh, good, good, good. Catacombs and Comedians. So. Um, speaking of catacombs and comedians, um, I wanted to show this off. This was a uh, sort of a little promo Ooh. that I've got. So uh, let's check this out. Hey! <laughs> Zanies Nashville, how are we doing tonight? Hey, That's pretty good. Are you guys ready to play some hey, D&D? Hey. Come on, make some yeah. noise. How are we doing tonight? This is the show Catacombs and Comedians, where comedians play D and D poorly. Poorly. Well, hey now. Okay. I've got two new players tonight. Neither have ever played any Dungeons and Dragons. Hey, look, I got candies for people who help me. Okay. They're, they're butterscotch candies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I love wood, and I always have my wood, and I'm representing the neckbeards up here. Thank I you. I have wood right now. Well, now my hands are all warm and luby, and I got nothing to do with them. Stop looking at the dog! I I'd like to apply to be a part of this social group. Oh. 20 bitch, let's go! You created a monster. Um, that's it. Thank you, and may you all make your saving throws. Good night. Have a good thank one, guys. You, thank you, thank you, thank you for your help. So there you go. That looks great. Yeah, I, um, I love the I love the placards in front of each person at the table. That's great. Yeah, that was something I didn't do every show. I went to actually when I went to that other D and D show, they had something similar to that. So I utilized, I stole that idea from them. So that was the one good thing I took from the competition. <laughs> well, that's great. It's perfect. Yeah, they got I, one of my players, and I took their placard idea. <laughs> did did they take the player? I don't know. I don't okay. think they've done it either anymore since their initial six show run. That that looked great. That whole that the presentation, um, yeah, nicely done. And um, that whole you can watch it now. The whole that whole show is at catacombsandcomedians.com, Excellent. which takes you to the catacombs and comedians Patreon site. But you don't need to. It's not paywalled. It's not paywalled. It's okay. available for anybody who goes there. You can go there and check it out. And it's not, I don't have all the cool angles that that um, promo spot did because, you know, a pro edited that. Okay. It's just a static shot of, the, of us sitting at a table, but it's there. It's at the whole hour, almost hour and a half show. Anyone can check it out. It gives you a good idea. And hopefully while you're there, you'll say, hey, well, let me check out this other stuff. And when you become a that patron. video, do you, do you, do you include that, tr- that, tr- uh, that video as kind of the opening credits for it? No, but but it's it's um it's on there as well. It's I think it's the greeting you know video mm. that I have at the smart. Patreon site. So smart. Um, but if I if I could edit, because I mean I can do some editing, but um, you know I just can't I can't line it all up, and I don't I have the software or the time really to sit there and. Yeah. I actually I've got the software. I just can't. I I just don't have the time to learn how to use the software to. And then, put it and all then together. it takes like 15 minutes for your computer to process the various video clips and do all that stuff just to get a, a, video, a version that you can t- review 
And then you look at it and go, oh, I need to tighten this, 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 and this. And it's a ton yeah. of back and forth. I mean, so even just making the trailers for Kickstarter is like an ordeal. So, I mean, I figured the way I'm looking at it, if you're sitting in the audience, you would be, you're not going to get all the different angles anyway, right? Right. So this is like you sitting front row center when you watch it. Um, and, you know, but I mean, I had to readjust the volume and I had to do, I mean, the audio was on a separate track. I mean, separate format all together so i had to time up the audio just right wow and do all the so i spent that's how i spent yesterday i worked on getting that together um for the most part just so i could you know have it you know let you know that okay steve you got no excuse now you have to you can go watch the whole show now <laughs> well i got to tune into your uh i got to turn into your actual play stream i saw you pop in there yeah that's pretty great that, so yeah that, that, that debuted on a few days ago that was Wednesday it? night. Yeah. Generally we do first and third Wednesday of every month, but schedule wise, cause some behind the thing show with some of the comics and me dealing with uh, meetings regarding catacombs and comedians. We for February, we're doing the second and fourth Wednesday. So we won't be doing it this Wednesday, but we'll, we'll, we'll be doing it the following Wednesday, I think. Sweet. Yeah. And, um, no, every, the players, if you watched, cause we did a zero session where we got to know the players and then this was what episode three now, so we've done four episodes of Wrath of the Aristocrats, and I still haven't let on who the aristocrats are. It's gotten the, and the shows keep getting the production values keep getting tighter and tighter with every episode too. Yeah, I keep tweaking a little something here, tweaking a little something there. Um, the I think the players are starting to understand that they need to up their game on their end, um, as far as presentation goes. Right. which is great. Um, so what, like early episodes it was like home security camera was catching him. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's still, like you said, it still has that sort of offbeat um, rebel comic, you know, feel to it. We're definitely not as polished as a lot of the, but it's, it's awesome. I think it's great. Yeah. Um, so we're having a lot of fun and I think the players are real. You could, from the first session to the second session, you could see some of the players. I mean, like Steph, she knows how to, I mean, Steph, they know how to play perfect. They're great. Um, and Kanan, who plays from, you know, the Zany show that we just showed, he was the guy talking about his wood. Mm -hmm. um, not the old guy talking about his wood, the other guy. Um, he, you know, he's on the show and his, I mean, his character, his character's already had a, 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 a an arc like a his character's already gotten some you know went from being like a total a-hole to you know being part of the team it was almost magical when the other players caught that wow like look at you you're helping out you know <laughs> hand solo yeah uh, um softening so it's been it's been real fun and it's a great way and then uh, friday night i had uh, six players playing at the game store the game keep in hermitage um, they were all returns except for one new player and she, she got the game and she knew it and it was fun. And this was the first time that we couldn't complete my one shot in the two hours that I usually have for those mm. nights. So I just said, okay, you're all coming back two weeks from tonight and we'll just do a part two to this adventure. So, um, yeah, so a lot of D and D right now going on. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, um, also yesterday, um, I don't know how far of a drive Knoxville is for you, but this May, it looks like Catacombs and Comedians is coming to Knoxville, Tennessee. Really? Mm -hmm. Is new that another Zanies club? Nope. Whole new venue, whole new cast of players. Wow. Um, I've been in talks with them, and uh, we're going to do a show out there in May, I believe. Wow, that's great. No final date set, but I think it's that month. I haven't heard back from... Uh, but a game hole con just yet. So, but fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I think um, you should be in there. Did you did you show them this? No, there's not really an application on that. This doesn't really have that on the form. I, I, I linked to it, but you know, that's not really like hey, upload. Psst, I've got the guy who runs at his home address. If you want to send him some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I'll do that. I'm happy. To, I'm happy to. I'm happy to bribe my way into that convention. I think that's how I got in. I sent him. A, I sent him a catacombs and comedians 
Christmas card and stickers. So swag bag. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll absolutely do that. <laughs> I'll um, anything that's not nailed down. I really want to do a convention this year as a, as a, as a outside of the comic book space. No, and I want you there just for my own selfish, you know, <laughs> reasons. Um. <laughs> so, uh, anything? What's anything going on in? So let's talk a little bit about. I mean, we don't need to cover the OGL, but uh, this time. I've I got I got them next to me here. So when that all went down, we're all everybody was talking about let's play different games, let's you know check out different games. So here here's a stack of some of the stuff that I got real quick. I got mazes. Cool. Which uses the from ninth level game, which uses the polymorph system, because I want to check that out and see if that's something I could you know design with. Travelers talking about doing an SRD type you know open gaming stuff and then of course this behemoth i think nice. i just tore my rotator cup lifting it <laughs> pathfinder 2 and then there is schwab's shadow of the demon lord wow excellent and then here's that basic role playing a book i talked to you about for see they just missed the but this yeah. is just a little flimsy, you know. Yeah. yeah. And then I went ahead and got the latest Cypher. Excellent. Game. So these are all systems I'm going to check out in my copious spare time. And maybe design some stuff for as well as the Black Flag coming out and maybe Coville's, um, whatever they're calling it. Hmm. So, yeah. So if anything, the OGL debacle did great for the uh the tabletop role-playing game industry as a whole for draining my wallet <laughs> well i think i mean how how i how i view it now we talked a little bit about it and that it, it does feel a little bit like this is springtime <clears throat> after the fire you know it's, it's that it's that uh accelerated footage where you see the sprouts coming out from the, the burnt forest floor mm -hmm. everything's charred and now you got uh, signs of life again uh I do, I don't know. I feel like we had the reset we needed. I like that I can build for 5e. I, I want to be able to say with this new book that it's for that it's for fifth edition and it's for uh, Project Black Flag because if they're compatible, can I just say, can I start saying it's, you know, it'll work with Project Black Flag? Have you signed up as one of their um, publishers for doing material for them yet? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've got my name on the list, but I'm yeah. like, yeah, you know, me too. So I don't care about. Yeah, uh, I mean, they do care about it, but they can't. They hardly can focus their energies on the you know the one guy who put out one supplement for one zine. Yeah, but the best sup best zine. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I I don't know. I'm excited. I, I like that. There's to me, what all this stuff came down to is that five E is permanent. Five E is not going away. They can come up with one D and D sure, but why would five E go away? Everyone's yeah. playing it. And um, I want there to be other systems because all of the other systems seem to be things where they've looked at five E and said, this is terrible. This could be better. Um, I think there's room now for someone to say, to make a better five E because now that the five E engine is creative commons, you could fix it. You could do, you know, five uh, E the way it was supposed to be. And I'm hoping that's what Black Project Black Flag is. Have vehicle rules. Have, uh, you know, a little more flexibility and uh, get rid of some of the power creep that came with everything Wizards done. Everything Wizards. They, there's a weird metric that comes from like the gaming side of things where World of Warcraft I think can tell. Oh, this is a really good magic item because everybody's using it, and that doesn't make it a good magic item. It just makes it one that hits slightly harder. Mm -hmm. And the spreadsheets have bear, borne this out. So they're like, okay, everyone use it. If, so to the point where a Folding Ideas had a video about it. If you're not using that sword, you're doing it wrong. He was talking about how there was one player who used to be in his guild who thematically he wouldn't wear shoes. He was a halfling or whatever the, whatever the, a gnome. He was a gnome in a World of Warcraft. And he wouldn't wear shoes. But they're like, you get a lot of stats from your shoes. You got to wear shoes. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not wearing shoes. So he was doing World of Warcraft wrong. Yeah, see, that's how I do it. I'm more, I don't, I, you know, I don't do that metagaming sort of thing. 
You know, I don't I don't want to wear a cloak because my character likes to run around. He's in, you know, right. likes to run around without a cloak. So don't, you know, okay. But look at this. Here's a cloak of protection plus 2012, you know. Right. I don't, it's, that's not me, you know. And it's weird because you can have a game where people, half the table want to play in this kind of fun way. And you've got one or two power gamers, uh, meta, you know, people who are uh, min-maxers who are going to, you know, break every fight. You know, I hit him with my sword. You do three points of damage and you feel really good about it. Then the guy who has been maxing over there hits him for 35 points of damage with a critical strike and gets that that unlocks three other attacks he gets to do. And now he teleports 18 feet and hits the other guy. And you're like, cool, cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's kind of like my um, game at the store, the Deep Delve Pizza Co. game. You know, you've got this one player who shows up and she's, you know, made her own handmade journal with artwork in it. And, you know, it's a beautiful piece of art and she draws pictures of what's going on during the game. And, you know, she does three or six points of damage with the sneak attack every now and then. And then you got these two monks running around with their 18 attacks and running strike. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to spend my three key points. And you're like, I, I suppose that's the rule. I have to, I, I can't keep up with everything you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Show me your journal again over there. You know, <laughs> how do you, how do you, I, I kind of see with Mercer does that sometimes when there's someone who like, I think it was some of the players who weren't quite as adept at the game as others. He'd be like, okay, now when they, when the, the other players like that, he would hold their hands a bit, say, okay, that was your attack. Would you have any bonus action you could do? You could still move. And there was that sort of thing you have to do to kind of make it so that people just don't think I did my one thing. That was my turn. And uh, luckily at this table, the players are really good about helping each other out. Oh, good. So they'll point out, oh, no, make sure you do this and do this, do that. So I don't need as dungeon master. I don't need to worry about that because I have a hard enough time remembering what I've, uh, you know, all sure. I've got to do. But then also, but with these other players and, and then DMing in general is what I'll do is if somebody gives me an inch of story or development that I could, I will take a mile out of it. You know, so she mentioned, you know, if this character mentions that, you know, she likes really bitter food. I'm not, this is an in, but just as an example, likes really bitter food. I will say, okay, you're a little bit distracted because you know there's some bitter root candies over there that you know so <laughs> yeah. i will pull that sort of i will make an emphasis on using that sort of stuff and even when it comes to the combat you know like this like you know there's somebody who's new at it i'll say i'll ask well how do you do that right you know well give me an extra roll for that or this or that and it's never anything hard but just to get them more into it and yeah you know because the guy over here who's you know has the player's handbook memorized doesn't need that Right. They found their niche in the game. So that's been the fun part about DMing for strangers, though these people have quickly become a group of friends because I've got so many repeat players that there's so many different styles. Because everybody up playing on Catacombs and Comedians, they're they're pretty much the same style of play because we know we've got to boom, 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 get it going, get your joke in, done, next, okay, get your joke in, next, boom, 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 you know. Um <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, it's, I got these different styles of DMing for different styles of games. That's awesome. And one thing that helped me in Catacombs and Comedians is I'll have everybody roll for initiative, but whoever gets the highest initiative goes first. And then I just go down the lane. Right. And before I was pit going, okay, and then who had this, who had this? So I just got too complicated. So, you know, you got to make, you know, you got to make changes and modify and for whatever That's works best smart. for the game. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's, um, yeah, those are my three campaigns, I guess, I got going. I, and my next show is in Huntsville on the 23rd of this month. That's awesome. I'm, a Thursday I, night. Yeah. I am super stoked for you. It is, it is, uh, yeah, you've, you've got lightning in a bottle, it feels like. It feels like you've hit on something that is quite excellent. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see you. How and then, goes. and then, then our next zany show is actually April third. Okay. So the movie comes out on the 29th. Oh wow! Or the thirtieth, and then, and then I was interviewed for the you know local newspaper or alt alt newspaper here. So we'll see how that that will release in, before the movie. So it's building slowly but surely. Gradually, we're getting 
you know, catacombs and communities into some, if I could just get more than a couple more followers on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you know, that's just kind of leveled out. And I don't know how to get the word out more. Yeah. I, it's just mailing list, you know, get one or two names on the list every, you know, every week. If you get, if you get, as I see it, you get two or three new names on your mailing list. At the end of the year, you'll have 150 people who are really into what you're doing. And it's not, it's slow growth. I mean, I mean, I know we always hope for exponential growth. We hope we're going to hit this tweet and it'll get retweeted by Matt Mercer or Neil Gaiman or somebody. Um, but by and large, the algorithms hate us. And, you know, there's no, we're not spicy. We're not, there's no spicy take. We're not going to be, you know, jumping with both feet into some scandal. So, right. well, we, we can change that. <laughs> We've seen people try to gin that stuff up. Well, it's, you always have to be a bastard. That's the, that's the path those guys take. They want, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not equipped. Uh, no, you're not. You're the no. world's nicest guy. So I don't think <laughs> I'll have to be the bastard. <laughs> that's all that's another story i want to write someday i want to write good cop bad cop and he's a good one's a good cop and the bad cop is not really evil he's just not a good he's not a, he's just not a particularly good cop he's just clumsy he's late he's a bad cop in, in not in the yeah exactly not I a like disposition that, yeah. just in technique hmm. <laughs> i'll write that down good cop um, bad cop uh, yeah, but if you're if you're watching us and you see the chat, I see it right there. Subscribe to the Catacombs of Comedians Cryer newsletter, and there's a link waiting for you. So jump on it. That's the one. That's the one. Um, I don't. Are you subscribed yet, Fraley? Yes. I don't. Absolutely. Yeah. No. How about Fraley? Seventeen. Oh. There. Yeah. Come on. Get on that. <laughs> yeah. So that that to me that's the thing. I, I have my mailing list, and so that's more important than anything. It's a bit. My mailing list is a bit fractured because again, it was comics people. It was across multiple comics projects. I've got people who were signed up because of Bloop or because of Astounding Space Thrills or because of the Middle Age. And then I send out something about a role-playing game and they're like, we don't care. Or if I send something about Astounding Space Thrills and everyone else is like, I don't care. So yeah. it's, you know, I don't really have <laughs> in a, <laughs> in a, in a, in a perfect world, I would have separate mailing lists for each one. And then some, and then be, you know, and then some poor bastard would have to be signed up for all of them. I, I don't know. There's no good way to do it. I'm just hoping that all of these projects have a sensibility that will tie them together, even if the genres don't. No, that's why I got rid of the catacombs and comedians.com website by itself. Thank you, Fraley. I appreciate it. I'll send you a sticker. <laughs> and then, um, and that's why I just moved everything over to Patreon, but I'm not going to make everybody pay for it. You know, there'll be plenty of stuff that's not behind the paywall, but then there's a lot of good stuff that's behind the paywall. So, you know, I've do got them on. For, for Patreon, do you post the video to their platform or do you post it like as a hidden URL on YouTube, that sort of thing? How do you handle, handle the video? Or I video? post this last one for the one for the show. I did post it on their platform. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, because because what I wanted... If anything, they'll all be available on YouTube because I don't think it's available on. You know, it's on YouTube right now too, but one of the perks or one of the advantages I want to make of going to catacombsandcommunities.com is they will all be there. You won't need to go to. Yeah, the YouTube just popped up for catacombs. <laughs> um, so everything I've got, I've got so many podcasts I got to finish and edit and kit up, and you know, eventually I'll have everything there, and that'll be your one stop as well you can get it wherever you're using if you like watching it on youtube or if you like you know listening on spotify that'll they'll all be available i would just want that to be the one stop that's great because i figure if i have that and i mentioned you know that they listen to somebody uh, these players fight all these uh foul bores they'll go oh the foul bore sounds cool but hey hey if i join i can download the high res monster stat block and description of the foul bore okay so let me do that or, oh that took place at the awful house Wait, oh, look, I'm at the Alpha House. I'm going to subscribe so I can get the map and use that for my game, you know? So that sort of thing is that's, that's my plan for Catacombs of Comedians. So I can pay for gas money to drive to Knoxville to do shows. <laughs> that's great. And then and how's the, and you, you still have a ton of, you have a merch, you, I, you have a merch table at the, uh, at the comedy events? Yeah, we try, I have a merch table where it's just basically t shirts. Um, and, but I give stickers away. I love making stickers. So I give stickers away to every show Our trading cards. Like, you know, the side splitter card that I got here, monster on the front thing on the back. I just sent off, uh, the foul bore card is getting printed as we speak. Oh, wow. 
And again, a thousand cards, fifty bucks shipped. Really? Yeah. And from from where? From that link I sent you. Okay. That's yeah. great. I didn't realize the price was that low. For some reason, I thought it was a, more expensive than that. No, mate. Well, you get all the fancy varnishes and stuff. I like it to look realistic, like it's from the actual area. So it's just fourteen point mat here. Right. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> Black and white on the back front, color on the front. But yeah, so I'll have Falbor cards coming out of my ears. That's great. That I'll be handing out to everybody because uh, we're working on making Falbor the official. Because I, my artist is working on a wraparound illustration of the Falbor, so all angles, so I can give to you to design the miniature. I'm in. I'm in. I want to do then, it. Then we're going to blow it up and make it into a toy. <laughs> Absolutely. Print it any size. That's what's so great about it. it get, and is it a large beast or is it a medium-sized beast? Or is it, is it, a, 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 or a, ab, what is it? It's a monstrosity. Monstrosity. I think it's large. I think it's even better. So you get to print it twice yeah. up. Yeah. 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 So we're working on that. Hopefully, you know, Musgrave will have that working. Uh, but I've been giving him on this list of monsters I want him to do for the game because I want to do, I want to do the squeezel, which is like a constricting weasel. Of course it is. The squeezel. Come on. Uh, sure. <laughs> um, there's uh i want to do the knuckleheads um and then there's i don't know there's all sorts of I, every now and then i just think of something i just jot it down and that's great i had a very uh, i had a really bad sinus infection this week and so i was on a ton of steroids and other meds and and uh antihistamine decongestants and but they they prevented me from sleeping and so I was awake and I just wrote down all the, the death dealing book got so much better because of oh, these good. Meds. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. And I was like jotting down all these. Uh, I'm very excited because the campaign page is going to be, I'm going to mirror exactly the campaign page. Cause again, if I, whatever I did before worked, so I will copy this. And I have seen it very interesting. People who backed me have copied the formatting of my campaign for their campaign. Nice. You could see you could see they copied and pasted, uh, and then did a quick thesaurus transformation of certain things here and there. Um, really cool to see. It's really cool to see because I you know I I studied a million Kickstarters to concoct mine, and so that they were doing it too is 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 lovely. Um, but uh, I came up with a here's a spell. Let me ask you about it. I think it's fun. It's a level one spell. You target somebody. And at the top of the next round, they have to re-roll their initiative. Yeah, why not? Yeah. It's a thing where you're messing around with the probability of one person. There's a higher level spell. You, ca it's, you cast it level three. Um, and everyone has to re-roll at the top of the next order. You have to do it at the top of the order because otherwise it will mess up. Some people might not be able to go. You know, I don't want to do that. They could they could really how about, game. How about, how about this? If you do an ally... They re-roll it at an advantage. If you do a foe, they re-roll it at disadvantage. I like that very, very much. I feel like I have to. I'd have to. I have to bump up the level of it a little Maybe. bit. Maybe level one. I like. I like level one because it was not really necessarily a detriment. You're basically yeah. basically letting probability do the work. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm, that's interesting. But the one the rogue, the subclass has an ability where uh called I think it's called cut the deck or something like that, where as a bonus action, you can swap positions in initiative order with somebody else. And so at the top of the next round, again, because I know there could be gaming and there's gonna be those meta gamers who are gonna break it if I do this, because suddenly their power will last an extra whole double yeah. turn. So at the top of the next initiative order. Um, the rogue and some other character swap places, and a friendly a friendly uh, player has to agree to it. Right. Yeah. Because I don't want to screw. I don't want people at the table to mess with each other. Because again, there's also I got to prepare for the the bastardly instincts of people going screw you. I want to go ahead. A, a willing target, they call it. Willing target. Yeah, yeah. A will. A willing. Uh, if it's a, a friendly, has to be willing. But yeah. a, an opponent. Like you don't like that the bad guy's going first. You swap places with a bad guy, and he's suddenly where you were. Um, hey, Fraley, that sounds cool. I'll hit you up on Thursday, hopefully, and we'll get that printer running. That is so great. That yeah. is so great, man. <laughs> but tell me, I don't know if I can do this. Can I share the cover of Death Dealing? Yeah. 
I think I could do that. If you can, yeah, I think you can. Share screen. We haven't done this before. Window, movie recording. So I have a quick time window, window looking at my iPad screen. So I think. Can you click on it down there at the bottom? It says add to stream. Uh, I did, and it? it should be at the bottom level there. I can't. I can't add it to the. Okay. I don't. Really I'll, I'll add it. You ready? Yeah. There it goes. There you go. Can, we, can people still hear us? Yep. So that's the cover so far. Um, I'm very happy with it. I kind of try to channel all my, you know, all my teenage Dungeons and Dragons playing, uh, every memory of. I love this guy dying in the front. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> all, all these little rogues in the corners. Uh, you know, it's very silly. It's very, uh, I think it turned out, I was very happy with how it turned out. It's kind of, it feels like a little bit of a, uh evolution from, I don't know, it feels like it, it, it fits alongside Intoxomancy, but it's also kind of a step up, I think. So it's a little bloody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bloody for Steve Conley. <laughs> part of that thinking was that, uh, D and D D and D players want to have some of that kick butt. It's a rogue. It, you yeah, can't, exactly. You know, he, he can't be throwing. They can't be throwing stuffed animals. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> so that spell. I had to create a new spell for the um, awful house location because there's a you know they, kind of a meat locker room where they have all the you know intestines and entrails and and gross livers and stuff. <clears throat> stored so it's a refrigeration spell and it's completely useless um it just keeps the room uh keeps a 20 foot radius cold for up to five days that's great but the only thing i guess the only thing you can use it for is it's it does no frost or chill or cold damage but you it does make it too uncomfortable to for either short or long rest to work in that place I love that's it. That's the that's it. I love it. I just needed something for the you know to explain how this room stays cold. So there's a new spell called refrigeration. It's a first level spell and it's completely useless. <laughs> rather I than love that, it. that's great. <laughs> Is it you said first level spell or cantrip? I think it's a first level spell just because it lasts for five days. Mm. That's really cool. Yeah. So that is that will be one of the things that's going to be on the Oval House uh, download that patrons get. So that's great. They that's get the high, they get the high res map, the spell, and then, you know, the room by room description of the awful house. Cause I've got a free version of it up there now, but it's, you know, it's just the embedded image of the map and, you know, it's not high res and it's all that sort of, so that's, that's how I plan on working the, the patron, you know? Right. There's, it seemed, did you do, it feels like this was a lovely idea for a project and it got all this, a lot of the steam taken out from it when, uh, uh, on the fourth, when the Cadega article came out about OGL one one, but uh, Dungeon twenty three, uh, everyone was gonna. I did, and I I got my notebook, and it, I never did it. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like a lot of people were gonna do it, and then you know everything went to hell. And... I mean, I'm following a few people that are doing it. Um, oh, cool. But yeah, you know, maybe if you know, I'll just start in March and just catch up real quick, or you know. It, it, it's 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 a nice idea it's a uh, but I, I can understand why a lot of people were suddenly like what's going on they're all mm -hmm. distracted by yeah there was just too much between yeah with the uncertainty of the show i had no you know right think too much was going on so but um yeah there's oh but with the now that the five e's in the common creative commons that's going to make my five e or my five easy peasy kids version so much easier to do now oh that's great yeah so i'm that's back i moved that off of a way 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 back burner and moved it up to one of the closer burners um because i've got this stove of creativity with 1200 burners on it <laughs> i was just gonna say 12 and i go no it's much more than that so i'm all i spend most of my time trying to figure out what project to work I on thought, next i thought you were gonna finish one hunt on five until and just wait for one to come out but five easy peasies i think is going to be 
its own. It's not going to be playable with five at all. It's going to be a very streamlined kid. Really version. pared down. Exactly. Yeah. Really pared down. Where, you know, to, you know, armor classes are either five, ten, or fifteen, or twenty. You know, right. Almost every creature has five, ten, or fifteen, or twenty armor class, and that and hit points. So I'm real. It's real. It's just it's for the five year old to come in and be able to play D and D. Right. But also, but teaching the basics so that when it is time to, yeah, graduate, be close enough to where they could. Oh, okay, yeah, because it'll all have, still have like the strength index. It feels like it's like the junior version of what DC Bradshaw is doing. Like you, that would be the that's the that's the progression path for yeah. Start with five easy peasy, move up to Something a little like bit that, fierce, yeah. and then get to uh, intoxicants. No, into uh, <laughs> fifth edition or critical role. So um, let's see. Anything else we got? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I all this week is just going to be well. The rest of today is going to be. I'm still packing up some Kickstarter orders for um, Intoximancy. Uh, post office is closed in the U.S. tomorrow, so that's not going to help me that much getting them out the door. But um, uh, Wednesday, 11 a.m., Death Dealing will launch, and we'll see. I'm I'm I have uh, I'm trying to be optimistic. The stretch goals will be uh, staggered a bit more openly because i'm more optimistic that we'll hit them um but i'm still going to do that window shade thing where i don't you know i don't have mm -hmm. to plan too far ahead because i don't want to break my own heart or break the heart of other people like oh man we really want to unlock this thing and we never get there uh, we never get close so it's just a lot to do always so much to do yeah i had a seven-year-old throw up in our bed this morning at five o'clock so i'm a little i didn't get i didn't get up in front of my oh. computer till 9 30 this morning so luckily it was our seven-year-old and not a strange seven-year-old so <laughs> is she okay yeah it's just little bug going around i think so Aww. yeah so we're just gonna i'm just gonna tinker with my stuff all day um and then probably go to a super bowl party all right you want to wait you want to wager you want to bet on your eagles and no, yeah yeah, I do. Definitely. Definitely. I feel like that's a very educated <laughs> thing to do. Um, that's the last uh, time I checked, the Eagles were favored by a point and a half. So. Wow, that's that's something. Um, yeah. No, I only bet on like cricket and uh, Curling. corn holing. Those yeah. are the only two things I bet on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Steve, talk to you next Sunday. Next Sunday, Dad. We're going to leave on Steve corn holing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a, have a great week. Peace. May you all make your saving throws. <laughs>